All right, here I am again with another coffee talk. And today I want to talk to you about something out of my past that's quite personal. When I was uh, growing up, uh, I, at the earliest point in my life that I can remember, uh, I, I wanted to be an athlete. I mean, I, I lived to, for recess. I, I wasn't a good student. I had terrible handwriting. I didn't know how to figure out mathematics. I didn't like history. All I could think about in class until I uh, started uh, being attracted to girls was sports. I couldn't wait for recess. I was into recess. That's what I lived for. Couldn't wait to play kickball and then when I got older football and on and on and on. I, I My parents tried to get me into music but all I wanted to do is play sports and that was my passion was sports and I always got an A in sports. Uh, but uh, uh, what drove me farther into it was uh, was my father because uh, he was not an athlete and actually my father was quite obese uh, for most of his life as far back as I can remember my father was overweight and uh, it was it was kind of embarrassing for me uh, to grow up uh, with, with him especially when I wanted to be an athlete because he was like the antithesis of what I wanted to be and it created a lot of internal problems for me a lot of insecurities and inferiorities and I, I grew up uh, feeling a little bit embarrassed because of my father. I love my father but it was an embarrassment to me. A lot of people go through that kind of uh, complicated uh, 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 upbringing but at least I had a father who loved me and I, I give him credit for that. But uh, because of my father's uh, obesity um, he didn't live as long as he could have lived. His, his mother lived into her 90s and, and his father lived almost to 90 and so uh, in my father's genetic makeup there's uh, longevity but because of his uh, inability to get his uh, eating under control uh, his life was shortened and he died when he was 71 so he could have lived probably another 20 years had he uh, stayed in shape or or tried to you know cut down on his food intake but uh, the result of him not being able to get that under control caused his uh, arteries to clog up. He didn't take care of what he ate. Uh, he just ate anything. And so uh, it, it created a great stress on his heart. And uh, about the time he was uh, 67, 65 to 67, he began to have uh, difficulty with his heart. And so he was uh, prescribed the medication, if you can call it that, uh, the... Um, I don't think you can call nitroglycerin a medication, but nitroglycerin was a pill he would take when he started having chest pains. And uh, that nitroglycerin, what it would do is when you take it, it just blasts open your arteries and allows blood to flow and uh, it, it brings a, a rush of blood to your heart so your heart doesn't seize up. And I've thought about that over the years and especially recently with regard to what's going on in our econ economic uh, situation here in the United States with regard to the Federal Reserve and the U.S. Treasury. Now that might seem like quite a, a leap, but uh, my father in a, in a sense is like a metaphor of what happens when you don't take care uh, of your problems, of your uh, um, lust for food, uh, you end up becoming obese. And if you look at the average person in the United States, we have a tremendous problem with being overweight. We have a problem with self-indulgence and it causes us to uh, be consumers. We just had a person trampled to death in New Jersey because people are so lustful of materialism, so into their self-indulgence that uh, somebody was killed. A, a guard was killed just recently when he was trampled to death in New Jersey. Who, who would who would have thought that could happen in the United States? But it's just a commentary on the nature of the average American who is self-indulgent. Uh, most of us are overweight and we're not, we don't have our sexual appetites under control. The pornography is running rampant. And this is just a commentary on how into the flesh we are, how much we are self-indulgent and uncontrolling and not controlling our appetites. And uh, when it comes to the Federal Reserve and the U.S. Treasury, we find now that uh, as a result of our indulgent lifestyle here in the United States, from Wall Street to the to Main Street, 
we, we have run uh, our uh, system into the ground because of our self-indulgence. And now uh, what we have going on in the Fed uh, under Bernanke and under the Treasury Paulson is this attempt to inject nitroglycerin into our system in the, in the uh, amazing amount of money that's been printed, created, to bail out all of these systems that are really clogged with uh, arterial sclerosis. We have an economic system that is causing great stress on the heartbeat and the heart of our country. And uh, this is a sign that we are in a situation that is potentially and most probably fatal to our existing way of life. When you get to that situation in your life where you have to take nitroglycerin to keep your life going, which was uh, uh, certainly characteristic of my father's uh, situation and what we see going on in the federal government, my father's situation is a great metaphor of what's going on in our economic system here in the United States. We are being uh, doused with <laughs> nitro and uh, it's only a matter of time before this whole thing caves in. Now, if you think we're going to prolong our life, we may for some time with the, the nitroglycerin they're injecting into our system, but the, but the long term, and when I say long term, I don't think it's more than three to five years at the most uh, where we're going to have uh, a seizure of our heart and we're going to have to have a whole new uh, development occur to, uh, for, for life to go forward economically, not only in the United States, but in the world. So uh, use this metaphor of my father uh, as a uh, way to gauge what's going on in the United States. And don't deceive yourself. You know, there's an interesting story in the uh, Old Testament. Uh, it was about this guy Gideon, who, who was an a instrument of God, who was uh, called to bring Israel together to fight the enemies of Israel. And I don't like talking about these old Bible stories because in many ways they're almost like cliches now. But uh, one thing happened in his life where God said, you have too many people in your army, you have to cut them back. And how, how would you determine who's going to be in your army or not? And what, what was the determining factor was uh, have the men uh, go to this lake and those that uh, go into the lake and to drink uh, and lay at the edge of the lake and, and uh, lap water uh, or just suck it up from the lake like without, uh, you know, kneeling, uh, those are the ones you don't want. And the ones that kneel down and put their hand into the water and bring it up to their mouth, those are the ones you do want. And I've thought about that over the years. And I wonder, well, why, why would that be the test? And the answer is because those that would put their hand in the water and bring it to their mouth would be people that uh, weren't as indulgent as those that would just flop into the river and suck up the water because those that would take the water into their mouth from their hand were still looking for the enemy. They, they, they never lost or, or, or left their guard up down. They were constantly watching. And those are the ones that you want to be in your army. And I want to see people out there that don't get uh, self-absorbed and go uh, sucking up anything just to survive, but are those that are watching what's going on so they're not taken by surprise and they can continue on with their lives in such a way that they're meaningful and are fulfilling their destiny. So let's be uh, mindful of what's really going on out there in the economy. Let's not get taken by surprise. Some uh, uh, very, very significant changes are in the wind in the next three to five years or possibly sooner that's going to change everything. And it's very prophetic time in which we live. So let's not be like the lappers. Let's be like the people that uh, drink from our hand and let's pay attention to what's going on out there and not go to sleep, especially during this holiday season.